Okay, so like I said, the bright field microscopy uh, is just a kind of microscope that the normal football microscope that we see in, in most laboratories and even the ones that we see in our secondary schools when we, we are doing our biology practicals uh, is actually based on the, the, the principle of bright field microscopy. Now, what happened is this. It's a kind of microscope that you have a light source that will shine on the image. Uh, on the object. So when it shines on that object, the, the lenses that, that the microscope is equipped with will capture the image that is produced. You know, it's just going to be like the first uh, lens will capture the shadow of the image that is being produced uh, as it is being magnified. And then the next one, and the next uh, lens, which is in the eyepiece will now capture the image produced by the first lens. Okay, that way you will see you will see that the image will be magnified multiple times. That's just the normal, the normal uh, principle uh, upon which right field microscopy. For example, now when you are in in let's say in in a dark room in the night, and you have a torchlight with you, when you shine that torchlight to an object, what happens? The bright image or the shadow of that object will be what will be maybe four or five times higher than that of the, 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 the normal size of the object, isn't it? The shadow that you see when you shine your, your touchlight on, on, let's say, a cup, the image that you see uh, or the shadow that will be produced will be about four or five times bigger than the normal size of the object, isn't it? The, the light source will off light. That light will shine or will illuminate the object. And the, the, as it illuminates the object, the shadow of the object will be produced in such a way that. Yes, Raquel, you are raising your hand. Yes, Raquel. Uh, you can unmute yourself and speak, please. Can you please mute everybody, sir? The place is noisy. Yeah, I'm trying to see the option for me to mute all, but I haven't seen it yet. Let, let me let me let me see. I have been trying to do that, but I didn't see the option for me to mute everybody. So I was thinking that we are we are all going to be matured enough to 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 do so. Still, I didn't see that option. Last time I saw the option and I was able to mute everybody, but now I don't know where the option just disappeared. Okay, I think uh, the person who, yes, uh, Raquel, it's like you're raising again. Go ahead and unmute yourself and, and speak. No, it's okay, sir, it's okay. Okay, no problem. So, like I was saying, when that light source, you know, illuminate the, the object, the object shadow will be a little bit bigger than the normal size of that object. So because the microscope is working on the basis of two lens principle, the first, uh, the, first, uh, the first image that is going to be produced by the first lens will magnify that object, depending on the type of objective lens with that object. If it is an objective lens that is called times four objective lens, that objective will magnify the, the, the image, or will magnify, the, it will produce an image that is four times the normal size of that object you are viewing. If you are using times 10 objective, it will magnify it 10 times than the, than the normal size of the object you are viewing. If it is times four that you are using, magnify it 40 times and if it is times 100 called oil emission magnify that object uh, 100 times now after the first magnification produced by the first objective lens that you are using to view uh, your object the second objective lens which is on the eyepiece okay, I have to let me, let me try and see if I can see where I can see it. Bye.
Sajia, can you mute yourself, please? Sajia Abdullahi, can you mute yourself? Okay, she has muted herself. Okay. So that's, that's just the principle. The first objective will produce an image that is uh, multiple times the normal size of the object you are viewing, while the objective, uh, the lens that is uh, equipped on the uh, on the eyepiece will magnify whatever image the first objective produced ten times. So in the end, we are going to have an image that is at least forty times the normal size of the object you are viewing. If it is times four objective lens that we are using to view the object, if it is times 10, you are going to have 10 times 10 uh, magnification, which is 100 magnification. So the, the, when you are using objective lens times, times 10, the size of the image you are going to be seeing at the end of the day will be 100 times the normal size of the object you are doing. So if you are using times 40, for example, it is going to be what? 40 times 10. So that will be about 400 times the normal size of the object you are viewing, okay? So this is the basic uh, structures of a microscope. Uh, I think I will show you a picture, okay? So look at the picture now. If you look at it, you see the, the base. This is the base, which is the stand upon which the microscope is uh, uh, standing on. And look at the condenser, or oh, sorry, the light source. This light source is what will give you the light. It's what will produce the light that will shine on the object so that you'll be able to see it, okay? And this is the condenser. This condenser is equipped with uh, diaphragm and iris. This diaphragm and iris are meant to, 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 to regulate the amount of light that will pass from the light source and onto the, onto the object, okay? And you have the stage this is the stage where you mount your 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 specimen that you are viewing okay and these are the different objective lenses each one of these objective lenses the all the three or four of them are placed on what is called nose piece this is the nose piece and this nose piece is rotatable so whenever you want to uh, place an objective lens into focus or uh, when you want to use an objective lens once you rotate it you'll hear a click when the appropriate objective lens is placed I know that I said this uh, said in such a way that once everybody comes in, you, you are going to are going to be automatically muted. I don't know why it's not muted now. So that is what you are having now. Uh, I, I, I don't know. The person that I want to see guys on should should mute himself. I, I can't see the, the the option to mute all of us. I don't know where it is. <laughs> okay. So, Flora, please mute yourself. Uh -huh. So, you have seen the persons who are uh, whose mic mics are on. Please tell them to mute themselves. Maybe they are not even with us. They just put the, the they just attended the class and uh, there. Okay. So now the 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 issue is that in the case of uh, bright field microscopy, once the 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 
once the light source is shining on the object, the object will, will appear as bright against, uh, sorry, it will, appear as, uh, it will appear as dark against a white background. While in the case of dark film microscopy, the background of the object will appear as dark, while the, the object will appear as, uh, as, as light. So look at this, look at this picture now. This is a Gram's reaction. This is a Gram's reaction. <clears throat> And the reaction that we are seeing, uh, the bacterial organisms here, are um, positive bacterial organisms. This is a, a bacilli. All, all the cells you are seeing here are bacillus. Okay, while the other one on the on, on the right hand side, uh, they are cocci in nature. Now, if you look at it, you have a white background, isn't it? Against you are having a dark object appearing against a white background, so that is why it is called bright field microscopy. But in the case of dark field microscopy, this is what we are going to see: the field will be dark. Okay, the field will be dark. See the, the panel picture on the, on the right hand side. It's cheery, right? Let me see if I can see her. Sir, it's not me. Ah, who is calling that cheery? It's not me, sir. Okay. Who, who, who is it then? It's I can't see the person. Huh? I'm not seeing the person. Who's I'm alone in my room for lecture. It's not you me. Are, you're alone. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I want to see who it is that, that so that I can hear the person. There are two teenagers in the there are two, in right? house with George. Sir, please, it's Flora Chinyere. You can move her from the flat. That's, that's what I'm trying to see, if I can get her. Move her, totally. Flora Chinyere, right? Did you? Uh, do you want to speak? If you want to speak, you can go. Go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Hello, yeah. Is it BD? If, if I may suggest, yeah, we are friends. If I do the, if I do, if Sorry, I can't hear you. I suggest if you can send the slides to us because the background and the network, in fact, is not helping matter. I'm going to share I'm the. Going, I'm going to share I'm, the slide. I'm, I'm the... finding it difficult to understand. Please. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to share the slides uh, in the course uh, course uh, page so you can download it. Okay. Uh, just like if you if you check, you know that I have shared the last week's slide with you. So yeah. I'm going to share this one too. Uh, the issue Thank is there much. are some things that you may not actually understand until I explain. I try to explain. That's the essence of the lecture. Yeah. Okay. Just trying to see. So how... are not this. They can you make sure Mr. 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 That's the point. That's the point. I don't know. I have Flora. This is Flora, right? Let me mute her. So I think we are good to go now. Okay, so if you look at it now. As against the white background that we saw in the in the 
bright field microscopy, that is, if you look at this, the two slides here, all the objects are appearing dark, while the background where the objects are placed, you know, uh, is appearing white. Okay. Now look at this. The the picture on the on the right hand side. That picture is showing a bright organism against a dark background. Okay, so that is dark field microscopy for you. But all of them, they are using full lens system. And apart from using the two lens systems, they're also using light as the light source. Okay, so that is the only difference is that th there is a kind of uh, a filter that they use, which will make the background appear as dark like this in the case of dark field microscopy, while in the case of uh, bright field microscopy, uh, such filter is not there. Okay. Uh, there is another uh, microscopy that is commonly used that is the face contrast and this one you can see you will have a kind of uh, an image where both the organism and the contents of the organism with the background will all have a kind of uh, different contrast so that you can see the organism and it is uh, it, uh, and it is contents okay so that's why it's called face contrast because each one of them uh, because it is uh, the, the amount of light each one or each part of the organism is absorbing is different. That's why you can have that kind of uh, contrast between them so that you can actually see the organism itself and the, the contents of that organism or the organelles of that organism. Okay, that's why we have face contrast. But all of them, they are using the same uh, two lens system and they all have a uh, light source as the, as the uh, thing that will illuminate the object for, for, for you to be able to see it, okay? So this is uh, a spiral kit. Uh, the cause of, uh, have you all heard of leptospira, for, uh, for example, uh, leptospirosis in, in humans? You know, the, the agent that is causing uh, uh, renal diseases, okay? So this is the agent that is responsible for that. This is called leptospira, okay? That is the one uh, highlighted on the picture that you are seeing on that, that film microscopy. That is one of the, in the case of lept leptospira, if you want to see it clearly, you have to use that film microscopy, okay? If you use light microscope, you'll not be able to see them clearly, okay? So the other type of microscope that I want you to know is the, the fluorescence microscopy. Now, it is also using the same principle of two lens system, but it is on case, Instead of uh, just a single uh, source of light, just like what you see in, 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 in the, dark, the dark field or bright field microscopy, in the case of uh, fluorescence microscopy, the light source is going to be an ultraviolet light. Let me see again. The person is back. So in the case of in the case of fluorescence uh, microscopy, the light source is not an ordinary light that we are used to. Rather, it is a light that will cause excitation uh, when it hits uh, a fluorochrome. Usually, they use uh, a kind of uh, substance that will emit light at certain wavelengths when it has been excited. Okay, that's why when you subject this ultraviolet light or you channel this uh, ultraviolet light to that object, because the object is stained with a dye called fluoro fluorochrome, that fluorochrome, once the light, the ultraviolet light hits it, it will make it become, uh, it will become, uh, it will become, uh, if you um, if you unmute yourself again i'm going to exit you out of this class uh, you are disturbing the whole of the class if you unmute yourself again i'm going to i'm going to exit you out of the class uh, don't unmute yourself again if you unmute yourself i'm going to uh, i'm going to exit you out of the class simple so because of that uh, excitation caused by exposure of this uh, ultraviolet light to that fluorochrome, the fluorochrome will become excited. And as soon as it becomes excited, it will emit a light. 
So that fluorescence light that would be emitted is what is going to be detected. And this is exactly what you see. These are all bacterial organisms. They are bacilli in nature. And because they are being stained with a fluorochrome, as soon as they become excited, once that uh, ultraviolet light hits the, the, the uh, is shine on the, on the bacterial slide, the fluorochrome will, 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 will become excited by that uh, ultraviolet light and then it will emit this fluorescence and we'll be able to see it. So one single agent, you can target so many different parts of that bacterial organism using different fluorochromes, okay? And all of them will, 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 will give you that particular color uh, that the fluorochrome is, is staining it with. So you can have green fluorescence, you can have blue fluorescence, you can have red fluorescence. That's why on this, on this panel, you can see uh, blue and red fluorescence because the two fluorochromes that uh, they use to, to stain them are actually uh, blue and red fluorescence. While on this right-hand side, you can see the green fluorescence uh, where the object that was stained it, the, the fluorochrome used was uh, of green fluorescence, okay? That is fluorescein. Now, there is one concept that I want you, you know, I want to introduce you to, that is the resolution of a microscope. So I try as much as possible to make it much more simpler for you to understand. Uh, the issue is those that are very good in physics uh, can, can, can check uh, test books where microscopy is being discussed and you can see the calculation there. But what is just important for you to understand as far as resolution is concerned is that when you have a, a, a kind of higher numerical aperture, the amount of light that will pass through that numerical aperture will be smaller. So the smaller the wavelength of light, the higher the resolution you will obtain. Meaning that the clearer the image you'll obtain. So that's why when you are viewing an object at times four, the numerical aperture of that objective lens is small. So because it is small, you will not be able to see, uh, if, uh, you will see an image that is clear, but the amount of light that is passing through there is very, very high. So that's why the object will become a little bit smaller. But when you move to the next objective lens, which is times 10, the numerical aperture will increase and that will decrease the amount of light that will pass through. So because of that decrease in the amount of light that will pass through, the, the image will become bigger because you are going to get more shadow, a bigger shadow. Just for example, look at it. When you, when you shine your touchlight, when you shine your finger with your touchlight, if it is closer to that touchlight, what happens? The, the, the image will be smaller. But when you move your hand away, from the touchlight, you are going to be reducing the amount of light that will be shining on the object, and you are going to get a bigger shadow, isn't it? So that's just the that's just the principle. That's just the principle. So the bigger the numerical aperture, the smaller the amount of light that will pass through, and then the bigger the image and finer details that you see. That's just what is there for you to understand. Okay. So now our next uh, discussion will be on specimen preparation. Now we are talking about microscope, microscope, microscope. How are we going to prepare a specimen so that we can view that specimen using our microscopes? Now I'm going to tell you what you can do you know, to use a uh, bright field microscopy. And I'm going to also tell you what you can do to view uh, fluorescence microscopy, okay? I'm going to tell you this. Now, the first thing you do is, when you have a specimen, that specimen you need to ask yourself, is this the specimen, the type of specimen that I can prepare a wet mount with? Or is it a specimen that I will prepare a smear so that I can, I can actually uh, fix it and stain it? So do I need stain to view this specimen or do I, or I there is no need for me to, to have any stain? Okay, that's just, Zainab, do you want to ask something? Okay, now the issue is simple. When you have a specimen that you want to observe, 
you want to observe it live, meaning that you want to see live how that specimen is behaving, then you are going to use wet mount to view that, that specimen. But when you don't want to observe the, 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 the organism live, then you can now decide to go and prepare a smear and then you fix that smear and then you stain it with uh, various stains that you can use to, to, to stain that particular organism and then you can view it on that microscope. Now, the advantage is that when you are viewing a wet mount, the organism would be live. But because you did not stain it, there is going to be a kind of poor, poor contrast. So the organism will not be too much visible for you. You will see the organism, of course, but the resolution or the, 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 the contrast will be a little bit poor because of the lack of stain. So you will not be able to differentiate between the organism and the background. The, 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 the contrasting will be a little bit uh, bad. But when you stain, that stain will give you a kind of contrast between the object you are viewing and the background where that object is. Okay, so if you want to prepare a smear now, what you are going to do is this. First, if the sample is, is in, 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 in liquid form, let's say, for example, you are in the lab and somebody brought a stool for you, and you think from that stool you can view and see the bacteria that you want to see that, that is there in the soup. All you need to do is, if it is a wet mount that you are going to make, all you need to do is just take a drop of water, put that drop in the in the in, 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 on a slide that is grease free and clean, and then look at the stool. Use your inoculating loop, take a loop pool of that uh, stool, and then you place it uh, on that drop of water, and then you gently uh, emulsify so that you can you you can make the stool to become a little bit watery and homogeneous. Then the next thing you will do is you take a cover slip and then cover that stool, that portion that you have you, you have uh, emulsified a bit. Okay, so by the time you put that uh, cover slip and you mount on the microscope, you will be able to see the bacterial organisms that are in that stool. And if they are alive, you will see them. If there are those that are moving, you will be able to see them moving. If there are those that are not moving, you will be able to see them just having a sedentary life. Okay, but in the case of fixed smear, let's use this example of stool. If you want to make that, that smear, after you put a drop of light, uh, or, sorry, a drop of water, you take a loop full of your stool, then the next thing you do is you, you, you put it to that drop of water and then you emulsify. After emulsifying, the next thing you do is you allow it to air dry. Just put it by the side and allow it to air dry. In doing the emulsification, what you should bear in mind is that you don't want to have a very thick smear. There are situations whereby you, you, you may require to do thick smear. And there are situations whereby you may require to, to do thin smear. So in this situation, because you are interested in a bacterial organism, for example, you need to do that thin smear. So you just, the water, the amount of water you are going to put, make sure that it's just a single drop. So that if you put two or three drops, the whole place will become uh, watery. So by the time you put a loop full of your 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 stool sample, the 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 smear will, will will be too watery, and it will take longer time for it to dry. Okay. So one little maneuver that I am used to doing sometimes, if I want to uh, prepare a, a smear and it is too watery, uh, I. I sometimes, instead of to, to, to shorten for me the, the time that I will wait, I will try to fix using uh, using uh, a bosom burner flame uh, while the smear is still wet. Okay, that will facilitate drying because as you pass through heat, you know the water that is there will be evaporated gently, isn't it? So one thing that you should be careful with, you know, the bosom flame. The gas flame is very, very hot. It's about 1,600 degrees Celsius, between 800 degrees Celsius to 1,600 degrees Celsius. So you won't, you, you, you are not to keep the slide for more than one or two seconds in the flame. You just put it and pass, you pass again, you pass again until the, the smear dries. But if 
you have made a tin smear, then by the time you drop it on the table, uh, within two, three minutes, it will dry up. And then you now bring it and then pass it through that flame to fix it. That flame passage, as you are passing this, the, 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 the slide through naked flame, two or three times, it will cause any bacterial organism on that stool sample that you have to, to adhere to that glass surface uh, uh, tightly. So you are washing and uh, uh, flooding with stains will not dislodge the bacterial organism from, from the slide. So you, you have two to three advantages of heat fixing like that. One, it, will, it is quick. Two, it will make the, the organism to adhere to the slide uh, tightly. And three, it will kill the organism for you. So the hazard that may be attributed to handling the sample uh, as you are staining the slide is no longer there because that passing through the, the heat uh, or the naked flame will kill the bacterial organism on, on that slide. So the next thing you do is you can now use uh, your stain to, to, to stain the, the smear that you have made, okay? Uh, there are stains that you can do that. You can use metallic blue stain, you can use uh, carbon fusine for acid fast staining, you can use uh, crystal violet and safranin for gram staining, you can use uh, Indian ink, uh, for example, for, for, for capsule. There are so many myriads of stains that you can use depending on the organism you are suspecting in that sample and the type of uh, observation or exam microscopic examination you want to do, okay? So these are, just know that there are two stains. Some of them are basic in nature, some of them are uh, acid in nature, and some of them are simple. When I say simple stain, it means that you are only using simple stain to stain that particular smear you have made. But when it is called differential stain, uh, it is called so because more than one stain is required you know, for you to, 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 to stain that uh, smear you have made. And in such situation, you are going to have, uh, if it is this organism, it is going to take this stain. If it is not that organism, it's not going to take this stain. It will take the other stain instead. instead. So that's why it is called a differential stain, okay? So I'm, I'm, uh, I, I want to believe this should be clear enough. When you get the slide and you go through the, the, the pictures, uh, you can see, what I have just uh, explained to you, uh, illustrated there. Okay, so for the electron electron microscopy, usually, uh, like I said, in the in the light microscopes that we have discussed, all of them they are the the things that they are using to illuminate the object that you are viewing is light. It's only that in the case of uh, fluorescence microscopy. The light source is ultraviolet light or blue light, so that you can you can have a uh, fluorochrome to be excited when the light is shine on it. But in the case of electron microscopy, the light is replaced with electron. So a beam of electron will be shined on the object, and as it touches the object, it will displace some electrons from that object. That displacement of that electrons from the object will give you an image. That displacement of electrons on the object will give you an image. Who is uh, muted again? Maybe the, the person is just joining, right? Sorry, the same. Huh? I said, who is again. somebody is uh, somebody's mic is is on? Yes, Kate. Uh, Kate, sorry. Hey, you have raised your hand. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you? Fine, sir. Please, I want to make a request. I don't know if it's possible due to some of these network challenges. If uh, all our lecture can be recorded and dropped so that uh, we can revisit even at the end of the live uh, lecture. Yeah, this one is recorded. I think all my lectures so far, uh, the, even the first week I recorded it and I, I, I put it there. Uh, on the on the course page and even the slides for last, last week. I, I saw the slide, but I have not seen the uh, recorded video. No, you will see the the link. I have shared okay. a link there that you will follow. Okay, I will try that maybe after this lecture. Thank you so much. You're welcome. 
All right. So the the issue is beam of electrons are going to be uh, shine on the object, and as soon as that electron touches the the object you are viewing, it will displace electrons from the surface of that uh, uh, that object, and then uh, in the end, uh, the, an image will, will be produced. You know, as the electrons are being displaced. Okay. So yes. Uh, uh, Kashi, are you still, uh, you want to ask something? Or is it Chinedu? Marcel? Good evening, sir. Yeah, evening, how are you? It's fine, thank you, sir. So as, regard, as regards the link you dropped uh, for the first week, it's no opening. It's not there's no pass. Yes, sir, there's no password to it. So please, I request uh, that could be rechecked and other other uh, other uh, recorded versions be dropped, including this one, so that we can look at it, sir. Mm, okay, the, I really have an option to to record to the cloud, and that was what they said we should be using, so that when we record, we will now copy the link and then share it with you, and that is exactly what I'm doing now. But if it's having a problem, I think I will discuss with the uh, support uh, group. And here, if they can rectify that. If they can't, then our subsequent lectures will be recorded on my system and then uh, post the video into the uh, on the course web page. Okay. So the issue is not about the recording or the link. It's about the password. The password are, are, are not correct. Password. Yeah. So you're saying about the password. Or the password is not correct. If you put the password, they will tell you that the wrong password. For the password was not. But uh -huh. I didn't password it. That means I have to check with the support team so that they can rectify the issue because I didn't put any password to it. Okay. I didn't put any password. I don't know if it is, but I would, don't worry, I will, I will follow it up with the support okay. and then if they can rectify it, then that's okay. Yes, okay, Chinere, I hope you are, you are out of the noisy place you are, you are in. If you are not going to ask a question, please can you mute your 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 mic. Let me mute her. All right. Now, these are examples of. Uh, so, like I said, what the the electron microscopy, the scanning electron microscopy and transmission electron microscopy are working uh, virtually on the same principles. Okay. But the issue is there is differences in resolving power between the two electron microscopes. That is, uh, the, the transmission electron microscopy uh, have higher resolving power than the scanning electron microscopy. The, the resolution that you can get with the scanning electron microscopy is about seven nanometer, okay? It's about seven nanometer. And usually uh, when you use scanning electron microscopy, it will scan the surface of that uh, uh, organism that you are viewing and then it will, it will be only the surface that will be visible to you. The surface of that microorganism or that object you are, you are viewing is what will be visible to you. But uh, in the case of uh, uh, transmission electron microscopy, you can see even the internal structure of that particular object. The resolution is very high. So this is uh, one of the images you can see, uh, a scanning electron microscope. Uh, this one, it was my final year project student that uh, viewed it. It's a viral organism you are seeing here, uh, what we call off. And uh, these are, the, these are the, the viruses. See them here. This one, you, you can see my arrow. This one too, this one, this one, this one. See them as they are burning out of, out of, the, out of the, the cell uh, where they were being grown, okay? And this is the higher resolution higher, oh, I can say higher magnification of the same viruses. This, uh, this two, this region, these two uh, viral particles, uh, what was magnified higher to this level so that you can, uh, so that it can be, can be seen uh, at higher magnification, okay? So this is uh, about uh, uh, scanning electron microscopy. No, Chiyere. Chiyere, are you with us? You're, you're unmuting yourself. 
and there is a lot of uh, background noises, you know, that is disturbing the class. So if you are not going to ask any question, if you want to ask a question, please raise your hand so that I can allow you to, to speak. I am the one who is muting you. And please don't unmute yourself again. Unless if you are meant to speak and even that time you have to seek for permission so that I can allow you to, to, to speak. I don't want a rowdy class. Okay. Now, this is what you obtain with uh, scanning electron uh, with, with transmission electron microscopy, okay? And you can have a resolving power of about 0 0.5 nanometer. Remember I said for the scanning electron microscopy, you can have uh, a resolving power or a, a magnification of up to seven nanometer. But in the case of uh, transmission electron microscopy, uh, it will give you a, a magnification of about 100,000 times. And you can, you can see uh, objects up to 0 0.5 nanometer size. Uh, in, the, in the case of uh, scalar electron microscopy, you can see objects that are about seven nanometer in size, okay? And you can have another uh, microscope, like if you use cryo electron microscopy or X-ray crystallography, or even uh, NMR, okay? Even NMR, they can give you higher resolution. In fact, you can get even up to one Armstrong. You can get a magnification that is even up to one Armstrong. So this is, this is it. Uh, I, I have included this slide for you so that you can see the differences in the uh, magnification that you can have when you use light microscope, when you use electron microscope, or when you use X-ray microscopy, or when we use uh, 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 NMR. Okay. Now we are going to discuss about uh, microorganisms and how they affect our lives as beneficial uh, neighbors and as our enemies. You know, when we talk about them as friends, we are talking. We are going to talk about them uh, based on the type of help that they can render to us uh, to make our lives easier. Okay. So I'm sure uh, none of you will say that he has never taken a product uh, that has been produced by microorganisms. I'm sure all of us are eating bread and a bread, you know, chin chin and other uh, flowery things that we bake at home, uh, we are used to adding yeast, isn't it? To, to, to make it, <laughs> how will I say, the ladies here will explain more. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how, how, how do you call it? Is it for the flour to, to make it swell? It is swell. Yeah, to make it swell, exactly. So that swelling is a fermentation process. And that yeast you are adding is, 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 is a microorganism, it's a fungi. Of course, it is a fungi. So this is there to make the flour become fermented so that it can now swell up. And then you can have a very good quantity and uh, oh. flavorable. Uh, bread or chinchin or whatever uh, flour thing you are, you are you are making, okay. So that means our relationship with microorganism is not just in the in the uh, spectrum of disease causing ability, but rather that they can also help us to to render services which will make our lives easier. Okay. So most of the the association between us and them that is beneficial is actually mediated through fermentation process, okay? Uh, and through that fermentation process, and sometimes even uh, protein production, you found that we can have antibiotics being produced by them. We can have vitamins being produced by them. We can have, uh, uh, we can have these microorganisms, you know, producing drugs, you know, all these antibiotics that we, 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 we are using, you know, of course, now there are synthetic ones, but before you can get the synthetic ones, initially all these antibiotics were actually produced from uh, bacterial organisms and fungal organisms. As they grow, they produce these substances so that they can suppress the growth of other uh, competitors in their environment. So man now realized that, okay, since there is this uh, ability of these microbes to produce substances that they can kill or inhibit the growth of others, as they compete for, for, for nutrients and space, 
then we explored that and we now uh, started using this uh, substance that they are producing to treat diseases. So that's how uh, antibiotics uh, were, were discovered, okay, in, in, by Alexandra Fleming in, in the 1920s, okay. And uh, of course, uh, there are other substances like phenol and, uh, sorry, like ethanol and lactic acid that are being produced by, by these microorganisms. And most of them, we use them, you know, as flavors in, in our day-to-day -day, uh, food that we produce for consumption. So these are some of the, of the products that uh, we are able to get as a result of microbial activity. We have sausages, we have cheese, the yogurt we are taking, uh, we have wine and bread. And of course we have antibiotics and steroids and hormones, you know, that are being produced. Nowadays for, we can just assign bacteria in the lab to produce insulin instead of us to be killing pigs and other animals to, uh, to harvest their insulin. Uh, bacterial organisms have been modified genetically uh, to, 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 to be able to produce these various hormones so that uh, by now, most of the insulin that you see in the market are actually produced by microbes, okay? They are not actually uh, from animals. Before, you have to look for, 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 for insulin that is being you know, harvested from, from the pancreas of pigs. So you can, you can imagine how many pigs are you going to sacrifice you know, to be getting uh, that amount of insulin that will be able to take care of diabetic patients. But because of biotechnology and other molecular biology tools and biotechnology tools now, uh, bacterial organisms are being able to be modified genetically to be producing insulin and other hormones that can be used to correct some metabolic disorders that uh, human beings are facing uh, with. And we can also use these microbes as single cell protein. Uh, of course, in Nigeria now we are not used to we are, we are not used to taking that, but these microbes can actually be be taken up as, as a source of protein. Uh, they call that single cell protein. Okay, so in the case of vitamin production, we have vitamin B twelve. All these microorganisms I have listed, you know, were documented to be able to produce vitamin B twelve uh, as as they ferment uh, some products. Uh, Streptomyces is there. Pseudomonas. Uh, the nitrificants is there and propionyl bacteria, shamani is there, okay? And uh, Clostridium and Ashbia gossipi were not to be producing riboplatin uh, as uh, vitamins, okay? So another useful, uh, useful association that we have with this microbe is that uh, for the bioremediation efforts, uh, in the case of oil spillage or in the case of uh, some places where there are some uh, uh, hazardous materials that have contaminated an environment such as pesticides, you know, and other toxic substances, microorganisms are being employed that have been produced in the lab, are being employed, you know, to, to, to degrade these uh, hazardous substances to non-hazardous substances, okay? So that whole process, if you remember, I mentioned this uh, bioremediation as part of the uh, spectrum of uh, micro or the scope of microbiology. Okay, so that bioremediation is very, very, very helpful in the developed world. Uh, microorganisms, specifically bacteria, you know, they have been modified uh, genetically to be able to use of the oil, you know, that uh, that has been spilled in water and other environment, so that they can they will now use that oil as a source of energy for them, okay? So by, as they use that oil as a source of, a source of energy, they decontaminate or clean that particular uh, contaminated environment, okay? Uh, so that's, that's another beautiful association that we have with microbes. Of course, when we consider them, the other spectrum that, that we look at our association with them is when we consider them as disease causing agents. And of course, there are so many diseases that we, we are seeing today, uh, which are actually caused by microbes. Uh, we have the almighty HIV AIDS. We have the COVID-19 that is ongoing now. We have Lassa fever. We have uh, smallpox, chickenpox. We have chikungunya. We have uh, dengue fever. We have 
Ebola, we have, you know, so many diseases, you know, that are caused by these microbes. So that is uh, another aspect uh, of our relationship. So we have two types of relationship with them. They are there to give us beneficial association. And of course, they are there to give us a parasitic uh, association. Okay. So I think another uh, exploration that uh, human beings uh, make use of microbes to do is in the terms of warfare. Uh, I'm sure we can all remember when uh, US invaded Iraq. The allegation then was that uh, Saddam Hussein was amassing, uh, uh, he has a stockpile of uh, biological weapons. So those biological weapons normally, they are being produced using bacterial organisms, viral organisms, fungi, or, or the cat cell organisms. So these are the four agents that are normally used as, as biological warfare. And most of the time, what they normally target, uh, you know, as, as, as the effect of these uh, microbes as agents of biological warfare is either to kill people or to, to, to impair them, okay? Uh, I think it was in 2005 or something like that. I can't remember the year exactly. There was that time when uh, uh, one gentleman or one, one, one guy was sending people with letters that are contaminated with anthrax spores. So that is an, an, an example of uh, bioterrorism, okay? If people are there in their homes and then this guy will just go in his, in his lab produce a culture of anthrax and then dispose, uh, he will have best disposed and then send a letter, send in an envelope. So by the time you open that letter, the spores need oxygen to, 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 to sporulate and produce uh, a vegetative bacterial uh, anthrax bacillus, uh, and, uh, uh, bacillus anthracis. So as soon as one opened that letter, he will inhale the spores and as the spores are being inhaled, they will be germinated because they become exposed to air. So as they germinate and inhale them, then the bacillus anthrax will infect uh, the, the person that inhaled them, and then uh, a, a clinical anthrax presentation will ensure after the necessary incubation period. So this is how uh, these uh, agents are being explored as a kind of uh, agents of warfare and bioterrorism. Okay, so this is the end of. Uh, uh, the lecture. Uh, I don't know if you have a question, you can raise your hand and I will do, uh, try as much as possible to, to, to do justice to it. Okay, blessing. Good evening, sir. Good evening, blessing. How are you? I'm fine, sir. sir thank you for the lecture. My You're question welcome. is on the beneficial aspects of microorganism. Okay. Those microorganisms they use in producing foods and every other thing, are they mm -hmm. weakened or dead? And secondly, mm -hmm. um, in, uh, under the electron microscope, mm -hmm. what is the distinct difference between the scanning and the transmission electron microscope? Okay. Uh, thank you, Blessing, for this question. These are beautiful questions. For the microbes that are, that are beneficial to us, they are not dead, they are not weakened. The only thing is that we are living it in a kind of beneficial association with them. They, they, they live with us as normal flora. So, for example, now the yeast you are using, the yeast you are using to, to bake, like I told you, is, is, is a fungal organism. But the body has lived in a very good association with it. Our own body is able to check, the, the immune system of our body is able to check, met the activity of this uh, 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 Saccharomyces cerebiciae, which is the yeast that is, uh, that is being used to, for baking. Our own defense body is able to, 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 to control it in such a way that it will not be harmful to us. There has not been any documented case of uh, Saccharomyces cerebiciae causing infection in humans or animals. So the association between us is actually a kind of, let's say, mutualism or commensalism. Okay, there is no para parasitism between us. So that's why uh, in that in that situation, it doesn't actually cause any problem. The fermentation process uh, is just there to make the flour go up, and then immediately you start baking. The 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 yeast itself 
or the organism, the fungal organism itself will not be able to withstand the temperature you are, you are using to bake your bread, so it will die off. So it doesn't produce any toxic, uh, a toxin that will be toxic for you when you consume the bread. And even though you can, in fact, you can even use your finger to test the, the yeast, and it will not put any problem, so nice. it will not any, any harm to you. So that is one. Why are my microbes? Which one? Microbes? Yes. Normal uh, level. Mm. Is the baby is not alive. You said? Gabada? So, she has one. Oh. <laughs> she, she, she is even speaking with someone else. Okay, hey, so, mm, let me let me finish with let me finish with the with the question and then i will i will ask uh mary ann to speak and uh, then later joe can speak too so the the point is other microbes that we use for example those that are using that we use to produce uh, uh, hormones and vitamins for us they are there to just produce the vitamins we are not going to consume the microorganisms uh, by, by ourselves. Rather, they will produce the product and then the product will get will be, will be harvested and become purified. Okay? The product will become harvested and then be purified for us to consume. You understand? The yeast we are using is actually uh, it, it gets degraded when you, when you start baking. And the, 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 the product of fermentation there, there is not any toxin that has been documented to cause any infection or any harm or any intoxication to the humans. That is one. So for the second question that you have asked about the, the differences between scanning electron microscopy and, and uh, transmission electron microscopy is that for the scanning electron microscopy, it will only scan the surface. It will only scan the surface of the microorganisms you are viewing. So it will only give you an image of the surface of the microorganisms. While the transmission electron microscopy will give you the image of both the surface and the internal part of that microorganism. So it has higher penetrating power. The, 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 the electrons that it produces, you know, have higher, higher uh, penetrating power than the electrons produced by the scanner electron microscopy. So because of that, the, the only area that will be visible to you is the surface of the microbe or the surface of the object that you are viewing when you are using a scanning electron microscopy. But when you are using translation electron microscopy, you'll be able to see finer details, not just the surface of the, the, of the object you are, you are viewing. You can even see the internal structures. So that is the difference between them. OK, Joe. Okay, so I will thank you for the lecture. Thank so my you. question, when you are talking, uh, when you are saying, you say that when you are, uh, when you prepared, like now you're testing for stool, then yeah. when you place it in the uh, slide, you pass mm. it under, it goes about, about 6,000 plus of mm. the heat. So my question there is this. No, you are found, you want to find out the, the microorganism that is present in that stool. So with mm. that heat, you are passing it through. Mm. Will the heat not destroy the microorganism? So how how will you get uh, the microorganism, actual microorganism that is present in that stool? Thank you for this question. Uh, it means you have understood the 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 the, the smear uh, the smear preparation part. Um, the heat that you are going to subject the microorganism uh, two, uh, like I said, the, the Bunsen flame, the naked Bunsen flame is between 800 degrees to 1,600 degrees Celsius. So it is that hot. It is very, very hot. That's why when you, uh, when you heat hot water using gas, uh, it is much more, uh, uh, how will I say, it, it is much more hotter, right, than when you just use uh, ordinary heater or whatever to, to, to get a boiling water, isn't it? So the heat you are going to subject the organism to is very high, of course. And that's why we said you are not going to keep your slide, uh, you know, in, in, in within the heat. As in, you are not going to put it in the flame and keep it for some time and then remove it. No, you are just going to pass it. Pass it just like that. You will be swinging your hand, okay? Uh, you'll be swinging your hand. I don't know if you can see, if you can, can you, see, can you still see my face? 
No, sir. <laughs> okay, can you see me now? See my finger. You can see my finger? No, sir. <laughs> but I can see your face. I can't it's, see you. You only the the world it's only, the slide. it's only the slide. Okay. So let me stop sharing. And uh, when I stop sharing the slide, you'll be able to see my face. Okay. So look at it now. See, see my face. Now. So you can see my face now, right? You can see me. So looking at my finger now. Assuming this is my finger is a slide. So this is how you will be doing. You just Hello? be passing it like this, passing it like this, passing it like this. Uh, okay. You're not uh, going to put it like this in the flame and then remove. Put it like this in the flame and remove. No, you are going to be passing it like this. Passing it like this. So as we are passing it like this, it will make the, the, the exposure is short and that will make the microorganism to adhere to the slide. Okay, it will adhere to the slide that you are passing through. So the heat is not going to destroy the microorganism structure. But rather, it will kill the microorganism, of course. It is going to kill it, but it's not going to destroy the structure of that microorganism. Okay, so you, you will still be able to see that microorganism. That's why I said, if you want to view that microorganism alive, you want to see it as futures, how it is, you know, doing this day-to-day -day businesses in the microbial world, then you are going to prepare a wet mount. But when you want to just see the structure of that microorganism, you don't want to see any other details, it's just the structure of that microorganism, then you can prepare your smear and then heat fix it. Alternatively, if you don't want to heat fix, you can, you can fix using uh, chemicals. You can use acetone, for example. You, know, you can also use uh, uh, phenol or glutaraldehyde, all those formaldehyde stuffs, you can use them to, to fix, okay? Uh, Mary. Yes, uh, good evening, Mary. How are you? Yes. I, I can't hear you, Mary. It's like your, your network is a little bit bad. Maybe you should type your question. Hello. Uh, type, yeah, I, I can't hear you. The, the audibility is poor. Okay. Maybe you should type your question. Uh, Eunice, do you have another question? No, thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, Eunice, I can I, I, I just go ahead and type it, then I will see. Uh, sorry, Mary Ann. Just type it and I will see and then respond. Yes. Uh, who? Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, no, no. How are you? Fine, sir. Thank you for the lecture. My questions are shared. Many of us mixed. We mixed the class, and the recording is asking, requesting for passcode before you can watch the, the section. Mm. Yes. Now, some of your colleagues have expressed that concern to me. So I didn't know that I put any password uh, to my knowledge, but I don't know whether if the, the noun uh, LMS uh, support uh, will be able to resolve this. So I will uh, reach out to them with this complaint. And then uh, I will hear what they can advise. We rectify soon, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yes, no sir. problem. I will, I will reach out to the spot. Yeah, support for, for this thing. Okay, thank you, sir. My second question is about yes. our next week class. I don't know if it's going to commence the same hour. Is it four thirty p.m. or ten? Yes, it's going to be four thirty. For this week and uh, next week, it is going to be the same time, 4.30. Uh, but after after next week, then we will resume our normal 10, 10, 10 to 11, yes. Hello? Hello, yeah, I can. Okay, okay thank you. Can you hear me? Mm. Yes, I can hear you. I said, sir, please, can you send us the soft copy of the... 
presentation, the yes, lectures. I will, I will do that. The the soft copy of the presentation, as in the lecture slides, is going to be available. Uh, hopefully today I will post it into the uh, course web page, so you'll be able to see it. Just like I, I believe you saw the the uh, course slide, uh, the lectures for for last week, right? Okay, and more to that, please can you send us the group link on our group chat so that we can have access on time? Uh, yeah, I I think I I did I did that. I sent email to all the participants uh, concerning the the the, the lecture uh, link. Uh, I okay. want to believe if if you check your distance, it's just like every every week when the time comes for us to to meet, you just click on the link. It's there on the web page on the course page. So you just go ahead and click on the link and then you will join the class. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So Mary I did not say an email. I didn't say your email. Do not send me an email. <laughs> ah, is that so? Yeah. Uh, did you check the email that you, you used to register? <laughs> sir? Yeah. Did you oh, sir, I didn't that? get your email. Too. I didn't get the email. So how did you get this link now? From oh, email. Of, uh, I think it's called Web that sent it in this thing. And I went yeah, to the yeah, I went to the email and I saw the course. I just clicked the oh, course. I from join. email. I followed the join. Yeah. From email. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know what happened because uh, I yeah, actually the asked your rep when email. I created, because initially I was having difficulty with the LMS uh, WhatsApp distance too. But when they rectified it and I created the link, I sent it to, they told me that I can use the the course uh, this thing to, to send the messages. So I sent the email using the, I sent the email message to you uh, and I selected all participants. I selected all participants should be, should be, should be copied. So I, I, I don't know why no, yeah, no. excluding you. <laughs> I don't know why it's excluding, excluding me too. <laughs> Uh, so I think what will happen is that I will I will res resend the link again. I will resend the link Sorry, again sir. so that you can. Sir, I think, sir, I think the link should be pasted to portal, post portal, so that everyone I, I, can. I already pasted it in the cost portal. It is there already yeah. in the cost portal. I think that was why what she said that she entered into the cost portal and she saw the link and she followed it. In addition to that, I also sent email to to you the very first week that I created the link. So I think it should be there, but I, I don't know why it choose to uh, to to remove them from the from the mailing list. But I will I will try and see if I can I can I can create another I can send another link so that you can you can get it too. Yes, sir. It will be better because most of us join through WhatsApp through the WhatsApp group. Through the WhatsApp, I, I I don't even know I don't even know the the WhatsApp group. I think it is for you, right? Yes, I yes. the close rep that is the close rep that posted it. Okay, he posted it there. Yes, sir. And I asked him, I, I asked Hello, him, sir. I think he, he was one of those that got the email. No, sir, me, I didn't oh, receive no. any through their email. It was through that uh, WhatsApp that I saw you posted. You you hmm. yourself, sir, not class rep. Okay, you 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 uh, it was through the email that I sent that you saw. Through WhatsApp. You are the one that said it through WhatsApp group, not email, sir. Eh. Is that so? Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know that I sent it through. <laughs> through also. It goes to WhatsApp group, sir. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello, sir. Yes, when yes, are sir. we meeting again, sir? Uh, we are going to meet man next week, inshallah. Friday. Oh, okay, sir. Is it Friday? Friday, man. Friday. But uh, the actual time that I posted is supposed to be 10 to 11. But I have some yes, engagements. Sir. I have some engagements. 10 to 11 this week and next week. So that's why I shifted the lecture to 4.30. For the subsequent weeks, we are going to continue with that 10 to 11. Yeah, 4.30, okay. Yeah, 4.30, ma'am. Okay. So, Kehinde, day, when I just asked a question, she said, why use SEM while TEM is more reliable? Or is SEM for specific microorganisms? That is a very good question. Now, TEM is more expensive. It's more expensive than, than SEM. 
uh, when I say TEM, I'm talking about transmission electron microscopy. It's more expensive than, than scanning electron microscopy. So some institutes, you know, have the, 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 the money to buy uh, SEM. Hello, uh, sir. Hold on. I am muting everybody until I finish responding to Kehinde. Uh, Kehinde asked whether if uh, why why do we use SEM when we can use uh, when TEM is more reliable? Well, is it that SEM is for specific microorganisms? There is no any specificity uh, for the use of uh, scanning electron microscopy in terms of uh, the, the organisms that you want to view. But the issue is uh, the two of them, you know, the cost differs. The transmission electron microscopy is more sophisticated and of course more expensive than the scanning electron microscopy. So because of that, uh, some institutes have only access to uh, the scanning electron microscopy. So for that reason, the, 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 that is all they have you know, to, 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 to view. For example, now in my institution, yeah, we don't have yes, scanning yes. electron microscopy. We don't have transmission electron microscopy. That's why my students, uh, that's why my students were, uh, were only able to use the scanning electron microscopy instead of the transmission electron microscopy. Okay? So you can, you can, uh, that's just, there is no any species. There's no any Tochuku, yes, I can hear you. Tochuku, can you? Uh, okay, Ame. Ame. Hello, sir. Good evening. evening. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Yeah, I'm fine, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. Though. So my question is that uh, what are the relevance of a microorganism in hygiene? What are the relevance? Okay, in hygiene. Yes. Well, in, in the case of hygiene, uh, they are very relevant. One, most of these microorganisms that are causing diseases, uh, you find out that some of them, some of them, the the type of uh, microorganisms that we 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 get exposed to uh, there are some of them that are microflora they are termed microflora meaning that they are there in our body colonizing our body take for example now our 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 respiratory tract there are microorganisms that are known to be residing there and our body is living in harmony with them okay so they are there as microflora in such a way that they will be able to exclude other pathogenic microorganisms that will be able to cause infection to us had it been they are the one that colonized that particular uh, part of our body. Take for example now, we have Staphylococcus organism living on our skin. Now, if another pathogenic organism under normal circumstances this staphylococcus, this staphylococcus organisms that are living on the surface of our skin are living in harmony without causing any problem on the surface of our skin. But if they are to enter into our body, they will cause problem to us because that is not the place that they are, they, that they are used to colonize it. So okay. once they are living on that surface of our skin, they will inhibit any other microorganism that will come to colonize that surface of our skin. So for that particular uh, period of time, they will be able to prevent any other microorganism that may come and colonize us and cause infection to us. Okay. So yes, as a result of that now, they are ensuring our own safety. And that is the overall aim of hygiene, isn't it? That's yes, the overall sir. aim of hygiene. You want to make sure that you reduce the number of microorganisms that are there in a particular body surface or on a particular uh, environment. That's the essence of hygiene, reduce the number of that microorganism. So if the microbes that are living on the surface of your body, they are there living in harmony with you, then they will be able to exclude other potential pathogens to come and colonize because they are going to compete for nutrients and space, isn't mm -hmm. it? 
Yes, so sir. likewise now, for example, we have E. coli, Salmonella, and other uh, Enterobacteriaceae members colonizing our gastrointestinal tract. By their colonization of our gastrointestinal tract, they will be able to prevent any other bacterial organism that may come to colonize our gastrointestinal tract. So they will prevent them from colonization and then causing infection to us. So that is the role that they can play in hygiene. Okay. On the other, on the other hand, uh, of course, the 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 the, the, the negative consequences of of, of uh, microbes in terms of hygiene is that sometimes they will cause the 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 disinfection and antiseptic process to become ineffective. How? The more amount of microorganisms that are inhabiting a particular surface, the higher the concentration you require of a disinfectant to okay. do disinfection. Okay. Do you understand? Yes, That's sir. why in the disinfection process or in hygiene process, you need to wash your hands. Why are you washing your hands with soap and water? It's because you want to reduce the number of microorganisms that may colonize your hand. Okay. And then you can now use alcohol to rub your hand. So by the time you, you, you rub alcohol now on your hand, after washing your hand with soap and water, you will have effective disinfection and sanitization. Then without washing your hand, you just go ahead and apply alcohol. Because yes, the yes, amount yes. of microorganisms that you will dislodge by mere hand washing is going to be higher. So it will ensure this if, if, if efficacy of that alcohol that you are going to rub, you know, to kill the remaining microbes that are there attaching to your hands which were not dislodged by mere hand washing. But if you do not dislodge them by that hand washing, it means that you have, uh, the, the alcohol will have more number of microorganisms to deal with when you rub it. So some of them will be on top of others. So some of them will be exposed to that alcohol while others will not be exposed. So that will cause the efficacy of that uh, uh, disinfection or antisepsis you know, to, 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 to be uh, not effective. Okay, so yes, that's, the, that's, the, that's the point. Okay. Yes, okay. thank uh, you. Sir. Yeah, you're welcome. Lady Anne, you're raising your hand. Lady yes, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, even though your network is a little bit uh, cracky. Um, okay. Okay, yeah, I my question to the chat box. I didn't know whether you saw. Okay, you have, you have, you have, you have, uh, provided your question. Sir. Yes. Let me see if I can see it. You, you typed it. Yes, on the chat box, two okay, you said, questions. Okay, you, you sent two questions. Okay. The name is right. for the lecture. My first yes. question is when using the fluorescent microscope, are you using a wet mount or a smear stain? It's actually a smear stain. Uh, the process that you do, when yes. you do that smearing, the next thing you do is you are going to use, uh, most likely, most of the time, what you are going to use is antibodies that are going to be uh, linked with that fluorescent dye. So the antibodies that will go and attach to that particular organism. Uh, will be linked with a fluorescent dye. So they will go and attach to that organism. And then as you excite them with that ultraviolet light, the fluorescent dye that is attached to that antibody will, will, will now excite and, and show you visible light. You will, see, you will see a light that is visible as a fluorescence emission, okay? So the first thing you prepare is smear. After you prepare that smear, you dry it, you fix it, you, you, you process it as if you are going to do, uh, you are going to do uh, simple uh, histopathologic staining. Then after you, after you do that, the next thing is you are now going to use primary and secondary stains. Uh, normally the secondary stain is what is going to be, you know, uh, attached with the fluorescein dye. So the primary, uh, the primary antibody, sorry, I'm using stain. The primary antibody will be directed against the organism that you want to see. The secondary antibody will be directed against the antibody, the primary antibody you used. So the primary antibody will attach to the 
microorganism, and then the, sec the secondary antibody, which is having the fluorescein dye conjugated to it, will now attach to the to the to the primary antibody. So when you excite or when you pass that particular slide uh, through through uh, your ultraviolet light, you can see the fluorescence. Okay. So that's that the process of uh, fluorescence microscopy is a bit different from. Uh, from the normal uh, bright field or dark field microscopy. Naomi. Naomi, you can unmute yourself. Uh, your hand has been raised. Okay, so I don't have any question again. Okay, you don't have any question. Yes, sir. All right, so the, sorry, the, uh, you, you, your second question, let me see if I can, See your second question. Okay, you said the yeast used for fermentation. Is it the same yeast with the medicine called yeast that is used for the ice? Actually, I've been yes. hearing this uh, medicine called yeast for the first time. I don't know. I don't know about it. So, uh, since you know about it, I think it will be your assignment to tell us the the the, the composition next week when we meet. Tell us what I, I I'm hearing it for the first time. I don't know about this uh, yeast, but you can you can share that information with us next week so that we can we can learn from that. Okay. Or is there anybody who who is uh, familiar with this uh, yeast used for the ice? Is there anybody who has information on this yeast? I think I will check I will, I will check it on the net. And see, but I, I I don't know. I'm seeing it for the first time. I'm hearing it for the first time. Okay. So in the absence of anything, uh, okay, Aisha. Aisha, are you okay? You raised your hand. Okay. Let me unmute you. You can unmute yourself uh, and ask your question. Do you, you have a question, right? You have answered the question already. Okay, I've answered it. Okay, okay, thank you. So I think in the absence of anything, or oh, do you have any question, Eunice? I just want to contribute to what you question you asked about the yeast. You want yes. the yeast for for okay, okay. a hand. Seems like we have lost you. Snakes for fermentation. You okay, to sorry, we, we have lost you for some time. So can you repeat from the beginning? I said, concerning the question you asked, based on the yeast, the one yes. for industry uh, production of uh, all this uh, bread and all that, yeah. Those ones, they use it purposely to increase the product. That's mm. fermentation. Yes, so that yes. the, the bread or the, or the fruit will, will increase inside. Mm. Mm. But in that one of uh, the tablet, the medical side of it, okay, mm. the, that one comes in tablets and okay. again it comes in powdered form. Okay. So the purpose that using it is to clear eye. Do you understand? When you're okay. taking it, it helps to clear the eyes. Okay. It's not for fermentation. I okay. think that is the major difference. But I have no find out the content. That is the difference with the context difference. Mm. I think I will. I will but I will. The, they are not used for the same purpose. Mm. Right. Definitely. I think I will look on it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm hearing it for the first time, honestly. So I will look on, on, on it and see the, the function. And then I can share with the class next week by God's grace. So in the absence of anything, I think uh, we can we can call it a day. 
then thank see you next week. Sir. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you very sir. much, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night. Good night. God bless you, sir. Good night. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.